Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest is a returning guest, Dr. Arthur Kavanaugh. He's coming back as professor of medicine at the University of California, San Diego, and also as lead investigator for Janssen Biotech. And he's going to talk today about the recent FDA approval of Symponiaria as the first and only fully human anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha therapy. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Kavanaugh, how have you been? Oh, very good. When we were here before, we were talking about uh, Symponia Aria in the uh, trial or testing phases. Talk about what has happened since. Well, the, uh, there has been uh, approval from the U.S. FDA, which is, of course, required for the manufacturer to be able to uh, allow doctors to use a medication for their patients. So the drug has gotten approval. This is glimab in an intravenous form. And it has received approval for psoriatic arthritis and for ankylosing spondylitis. And it, it had received approval years before for rheumatoid arthritis. So this, uh, it's uh, interesting and it's, it's exciting in that new options, additional options are uh, always a great thing. The more tools that we have for our patients, the more we're able to hopefully get each patient to get the therapy that's going to be best for them. Uh, the the data are really not surprising, uh, I think you might say, in that the glimab has been approved. It's, it's a, a drug that we've known about. It's one of the TNF inhibitors that's been approved for a number of diseases in the subcutaneous form, and now uh, the intravenous form has been approved for these additional indications. Now that we um, have this intravenous option, what does that mean for folks who are dealing with uh, AS or PSA? Uh, it's, it is, so the availability of a uh, intravenous preparation is going to be something that's going to be of, of particular value to, for example, people who should choose to receive admin, admin, administration of medicine intravenously. So the TNF inhibitors, uh, they're proteins, and at present time, the technology is not such that uh, they can be given any other way other than what we doctors call parenterally, which means you can't take it by mouth. So it can be injected under the skin or infused in the vein. Uh, different patients have different preferences and depends on a lot of factors such as the frequency of administration and how long the visits take, uh, some very practical things, how far they live from their doctor's office, uh, their work schedule, their home schedule, etc. Uh, and personal preference, whether or not patients would like an injection or infusion. So all those things, of course, matter. And this now gives us a additional uh, option for, sub for the intravenous administration. We have had infliximab, which is a, a TNF inhibitor that's been approved since 1998 for Crohn's disease, but it's given intravenously. Now we have another option. The other factor that's going to be important to patients is that everyone's health care uh, is, of course, uh, a, a big concern with everyone's health care healthcare is uh, the costs and what they pay out of their pocket. And for some patients, that might push them toward thinking an intravenous type of administration may be preferable. So it's always, it's better to have more choices. So um, I think that's very, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing. Let's talk about some of those, those practical uh, factors when making that decision. What is the frequency of dosing for this uh, brand new approved drug? Well, I'm not going to get into that on the radio, Neil. I think uh, this is something I'm going to leave for the patients and doctors to sort out um, about dosing and dose uh, um, uh, regimens, um, frequency, and the dose itself and the practical aspects of that. Those are important issues, but this really needs to come as a, a conversation between the patient and their physician. So it's something that could vary that greatly. Yeah, it's something. It's it, it's it's part and parcel. Uh, it's an important discussion. Um, what is, what are how is it typically given? What are the the possibilities for potentially uh, changing that in any way? So, but these are these are things that really need to be uh, sorted out at the at the patient level. So, how many people would we would we say are uh, dealing with uh, PSA and AS here in the United States? Well, if you uh, it, as with a lot of rheumatic diseases. It uh, sometimes uh, it can be hard to get a, a complete handle on because some patients may not come to medical care. 
So you have numbers from opposite ends, if you will. If you do a epidemiologic study and go into a community and say how many people will have any of the spondyloarthropathies, which would be, that's a fancy name for spine arthritis, um, of which we think ankylosing spondylitis is the most uh, the exemplary type of that. But this also includes psoriatic arthritis, not all of whom, not, not the, the patient's don't all have spine involvement, but it has a lot of similarities to that, to ankylosing spondylitis from an immune standpoint and a treatment standpoint. And also, if you fold in there the arthritis that goes with inflammatory bowel disease or the arthritis that we call reactive arthritis, if you add all those up, it's probably 1% of the population. Are there any uh, side effects that changed or were eliminated based on the differing um, delivery systems? No, I think one of the good things about the TNF inhibitors is that we've had them available to us in the clinic since 1998. Uh, gosh, that's a long time ago. And in research studies before that. So uh, we always think about safety, but the more patients that have received a medicine over the more the, the larger number of years, the better I think we have a, a sense of what to expect with safety. I think the most important thing we think about with all the TNF inhibitors is the possibility of infection. I think we've gotten real good about trying to uh, stratify patients about who perhaps would not be the best candidate for treatment uh, and also to evaluate them. But uh, it's still something that we think about. And this is this is not unique, of course, to glimmab. This is really across all of the TNF blocking agents. Does this address any of the uh, skin symptoms that often accompany PSA? Well, so, so skin psoriasis is uh, it's an important issue. Um, certainly, uh, almost all uh, of the patients with psoriatic arthritis either have skin psoriasis or have had at some time. Um, and honestly, the, the, most of the people have psoriasis before they have psoriatic arthritis. Now, the, the medication is not approved for skin psoriasis by itself. But based on the data that we've seen in the study, there's every expectation that for patients with psoriatic arthritis, that their skin uh, has a very good chance to improve uh, to a great extent, just like we saw in the study. Now, we'd like to go and get some more information about Symponiaria. Where can we go and get some of that? Well, I think the, there's a ton of information out on the Internet, and I think half of it's probably true. Um, but I think that for this drug in particular, uh, one could go to the manufacturer's uh, website. Uh, it's made by uh, Janssen or Janssen, uh, and, uh, or just look up Golimumab or look up Symphony, and Symphony Aria is the intravenous part in there. You'll see information for providers, information for patients of various sorts, uh, and the, the study information will be listed. So you'll find the information that is in the package insert, which harkens back to a day when there was no internet and you actually got a little piece of paper inside a package of medications. So that's, that's for our younger right. listeners. That's why it's called a package insert <laughs> because there used to be a package. Uh, but there you have a, a long list of, of the data for people who really want to get into the, the granular details about that. Always a pleasure. Thanks for coming back, Dr. Arthur Kavanaugh. Thank for you for having me. Biotech. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm as well as healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Visit our affiliates page when you're there and download and subscribe at iTunes.